Now, after reviewing a premium folding bike just a few weeks ago, I wanted to set out to find the least or one of the least expensive folding bikes on Amazon. And I picked up an Act Best Knight. This thing comes in at only $899. But the question is, does this compare to a bike that is much more expensive than what this one is selling for? Let's go ahead and look at all the details on this bike and then take it out for a test ride. All right, looking at this bike, you are going to get a Shimano seven speed shifter setup. This is really common on almost all e-bikes in this kind of category, folding and non-folding. This is also considered a class three e-bike that comes equipped with a 48 volt system with a 14 amp hour battery, along with a max peak of 750 watts in the rear motor. This will allow you to go all the way up to 28 plus miles an hour. And I am happy to tell you that you can actually do over 20 miles an hour with the throttle, not just with the pedal assist. And then included in the e-bike portion of this bike is this color display here. I have seen this display used on several bikes. The control system over here on the left is pretty generic, but it gives you all the controls you need to shift up and down between your pedal assist levels. Turn on the light, go to the info screen, power the bike on and off, and not only that, use a walk mode to help you get up some of those challenging hills. Now looking at the brake setup, we are going to get some generic brakes, and that's to be expected in the sub $1,000 range. They have waxing levers, and these levers are mechanical, they are not hydraulic, and they go down to some generic calipers along with 160 millimeter rotors. And then up front, you will get a nice little headlight up front and a tail light in the back that is tied into the system. These are nice features to have just in case you're out on the trail a little bit past sunset. As far as the cable management goes, I think they did a fairly decent job. I do like to see these little Velcro kind of sleeves that go around all the cabling. It's a little bit easier to undo and kind of mess around with the cabling if you need to. Now, a few niceties that come on this bike that you tend to see on some higher end brands are some lugs up front to be able to actually attach a front basket or some other accessories, along with a nice sturdy rack in the back to be able to put on some pannier bags or some other type of bag that you would want to carry around items. Now, this does come with a pretty standard hydraulic front suspension that seems to absorb the bumps relatively well. But really, the fat tires that come on this bike that are 20 inches by four inches are gonna give you that super nice, comfortable ride that a lot of you are gonna be looking for. Now, that is pretty much all the specs and details on this. To get over to the folding side of this bike, you are gonna get some nice features where the handlebars will raise and lower. So if you're a taller person or a shorter person, you can dial this in to exactly the height that feels comfortable to you. So Act Best claims that if you are 5'3 to 6'6, six, six, this bike will work for you. But I have found somebody who is under 5'3, it will work for them. But also somebody who is around six foot is about the max that I would go with on this particular bike. Now, as far as the folding features go, this works pretty much just like a standard folding bike. You simply have a lever right here that will pop out and allow these handlebars to fold down nicely. And then once you've got the handlebars down, you've got a lever down here that locks the frame together. It is relatively easy to open and it does have a safety switch to keep it from opening while you're out on a ride. Then once you've got that unlocked, you can simply just start the folding process. Now, just like all folding bikes, when they're new, the hinges are pretty stiff. So it may take a little bit of effort at first, but after you use it for a while, it'll get easier and easier. Now this does have a little foot peg down at the bottom to prevent it from landing on the frame itself. So these are all pretty standard folding features that you would find on anything from $800 all the way up to $2,000 when it comes to a folding bike. Now this does come with some plastic fenders on here, which just look okay. These aren't the best looking fenders. They do look a little bit cheap, but that's kind of to be expected when you're talking a sub $1,000 bike with all the features it comes with. Now, one thing that I was pleasantly surprised with, this does come with a three amp charger. So that's gonna speed up this charge time quite a bit compared to most other e-bikes in this price category. Now, the only problem that I had with this bike whenever I got it was this scratch on this frame. Other than that, this bike was in pretty much perfect condition and ready to ride. All right, now that we know a little bit more about this super budget friendly e-bike that you can find on Amazon, let's take it out and see if it can conquer the 19% grade hill that I test out all my e-bikes on. 
All right, we are out here on the ActBest night folding e-bike. This is the super budget e-bike from Amazon that I picked up just to compare it to some of the premium brands out there. All right, I wanna start off by saying that the fit and feel for somebody who is 5'11", they claim that this bike will work up to a 6'6 person, and I disagree with that completely. I am 5'11", and I feel like at the maximum seat height that this thing is allowing me to go up to is just not enough, like even for me. So if I were to buy this bike, I would definitely consider getting a longer seat post so I could raise it up a little bit more. The handlebars feel good, the reach feels good, but the maximum seat height, I am maxed out and my legs don't fully extend. But one thing that I do love about this is that the throttle has no limit. Now the tires do have a little bit of a thump to them, but that could be just the tires not being used, they're brand new, and hopefully that will smooth out after a while. The shifting on the bike seems to work really well. No issues there, being that it's a Shimano shifter. The brakes are a little uh, less desirable, but to be expected with really budget branded cable driven brakes, not hydraulic. Give the horn a test here. Pretty, pretty typical horn. Now that cadence sensor is really delayed. Let's see, all right, we're gonna stop pedaling. Pedal, 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 and it kicked in. I did several rotations there. Let's just see. One, two, three, four. Four rotations of the pedals before the cadence sensor actually picked up. That is really kind of surprising. I have not seen a cadence sensor have that big of a delay. Now it did pick up there a little bit quicker. And wow, let me tell you, this thing accelerates super fast. And we're up to, we're going down a slight hill here, 30, 31, 30, 32 miles an hour really quick. So this bike is very fast, but that cadence sensor delay is a little bit of a disappointment. So if we keep this in mind that this is a sub $1,000 bike or heck, even a sub $900 bike, so far it's riding really well. Okay, here we are at the bottom of the hill that I test all of my e-bikes on and we're gonna give the Act Best Night a run for its money. Let's try it with pedal assist first and then if that does really well, let's go ahead and try out this throttle since there seems to be no limit on the throttle, just like on the pedal assist. Let's go ahead and let's get going. All right, let's go ahead and get started with throttle like we always do, get up to a little bit of speed here and then we'll start pedaling. I'm going to that cadence sensor, so slow. I'm gonna go ahead and shift into a little bit harder gear here. There we go, seven. All right, we are up to 22, 23 before we got to where the incline really started. Now this is about 12% grade right here. The bike seems to be doing good, but this short seat really is not conventional for my riding height. I wish it was a little bit taller feel like my legs are going to get tired going up this. At the top of this driveway, we will be getting to the 19% grade. I am in gear five now. Gear four, we're at 12 miles an hour, 11. This thing is still pulling, and I've only had to go all the way down to gear four. Didn't have to drop it all the way down. Keeping around 11, 11 and a half. And 12, there we go. So for a sub 900 or sub $1,000 bike, this bike climbed the hill pretty well. All right, we're here at the top of the hill. We'll get this thing going. All right, we're gonna coast down and see what this thing can do. And I hope these brakes work good. 37, 39, 40. Forty miles an hour on the downhill coast. 
This bike rode really well, felt really stable. There was no wobble going that fast on this bike. All right, let's go throttle only. I went ahead and put this in the easiest gear. So if it does stop at the top of this hill or somewhere on this hill, I can continue to pedal. Unlike whenever I tested the Ingway M20, it, uh, it couldn't make it up the 19% part and I had to completely stop. So let's just see what this guy can do. We're at about at the 12% right now, going 17. Let's see, it's, it's starting to slow down, but it seems to be doing pretty decent compared to the Ingway, which should have done a lot better. 14, here's the 15%. We are almost to the 19% and we're at 12 miles an hour, 11 miles an hour. This is a 19, 10, nine, eight. Is this thing gonna do it? Seven, six, five. It's still going. This thing is still pushing and it's now gaining speed. Wow. Okay, it's not really going fast, but I think we're gonna make it throttle alone on a sub $900 bike. Wow. Okay. That's actually impressive. I did not expect this bike to make it up the hill throttle alone. So if you're looking for a budget bike to just do throttle, this bike has a lot of potential. Here we're gonna actually test out these brakes to see how they do. Nope, could not lock up the brakes. So there you go, that is the Act Best Night. And I would say that for $900, you're really getting a fairly decent bike. There are a few things on this bike that I would definitely recommend Act Best to change in the future. Number one is the brakes. These Wuxing brakes are really lackluster, nothing to be desired after. And also the seat post height. This could be a little bit longer seat post, that way you could actually truly get someone that's over 5'10 comfortably on this bike. And then lastly is the cadence sensor being really slow to respond. I don't know if it's the cadence sensor's fault or the controller's fault, what's causing that, but it is definitely the slowest responding cadence sensor out of any bike that I've reviewed. Now to make up for that, you do have that throttle that will go all the way up to maximum speed, which is really nice. And not to mention, this thing climbed better than almost any of my other e-bikes when I tested it out with throttle only on that hill climb. All right, guys, if this bike is the bike for you, check out my links down below. And if this bike isn't the bike for you, check out my playlist right here of all the other e-bikes that I've reviewed. And we'll see you guys in the next one.